Hey guys, so today for you I have leak code problem 209, which is the minimum size subarray sum question. So in this question, you're given an array of positive integers, and you're given a value s. And you're supposed to find the fewest, the, the smallest subarray, like with size, how many elements are in the subarray, that have a sum greater than or equal to s. So you're supposed to, so for any, in this example, say how many elements is the minimum you need to get to 11. And it would be 2. So this 4 and this 7, they're next to each other, and they have a sum equal to 11. So I'm going to show you how you solve this question. So what you want to do is you want to look at the first element. You say, okay, the first element, that's 1. So it has a sum of 1. And then you want to look at the next element. You say 1 plus 3 is 4. So these two have a total of 4. And then you look at the next element, so 5. So you're still not bigger than 11, so 1 plus 3 plus 5 equals 9. So then you'll add the next one, 8. 1 plus 3 plus 5 equals 17. That's bigger. So you say, okay, the minimum I can find is it's 4 so far. Out of these 4 elements, um, we know you can find it with 4. And you say, okay, the sum is 17, and the first, the, the last element that it includes is this 1. So you say, okay, well, what happens if I get rid of this 1? That was a terrible error, but I apologize. So you say, okay, with these four elements, what happens if I get rid of the 1? So you're at 17, and then you can say 17 minus 1 is 16. So you can say, okay, I can get to 16 without this one. 16, that's still bigger than 11. So we'll say, okay, what about if I get rid of the next number? So then you'll get rid of this 3. So you can, like, cross both of these numbers out. You don't need them anymore. So you say, okay, I get rid of the 3, and now I'm at 13. 13, well, hot diggity dog, that's still bigger than... um. Still bigger than 11. So you say, okay, what happens if I get rid of the 5? So then this 5 gets executed. by. Then you're just at 8. So 8 is less than um, 11. So you'll continue. So then you say 8 plus 2, that's 10. And so far your minimum is 2. So you say, okay, 8, 8 plus 2, 10, less than 11. So you add the 4. 10 plus 4, 14. That's bigger. So you say, okay. We know we can get 3 out of these 3. These 3 is equal to 3. But we've already found it with 2, so we don't even need the 3. And then we say, okay, so we're at 14. What happens if we get rid of this 8? Well, then we're just down to 6. So we have to, uh, we have to keep going now. Oops. This eraser is huge. So we're, we're down to 6 now. These 2. And then we say, okay, what happens if we add the 7? Then we're up to 13. 13 is bigger. So we say, okay, we can get it with 3. And then we get rid of the 2. We can say, okay, now we, with just 2, 11, that still works. We say, okay, we can get it with 2. It's still not smaller than the 2 we found before. Every time we find a value, we check, okay, is it better than before? And it's not. So we say, okay, what happens if I get rid of the 4? 7. 7 is not bigger than 11. Okay, so we'll start with 7, then we'll add the next number, 3, that's 10, and then we add the next number, 12. We say, okay, 12 is bigger than 11. Let's see, maybe maybe this number could be an 11 here. Actually, I'll put it as an 11, just so you can see. So you're at 10, and then you add an 11, so you're at 21. Okay, 21 is bigger than 11, so you get rid of the 7. You say 14, okay, 14 is bigger than 11, so you get rid of this. You say, okay, 11. 11 equals 11, so we found it with 1. So our final answer only takes one element to do this all. So I'm going to show you guys the code to find the solution. So you, what you do is you create a variable called your global fewest, which represents the fewest amount of numbers that you'll need. You'll have a number inter fewest, so that's kind of, you're going to be comparing your inter fewest with your global fewest. Find, if you find uh, something less than global fewest, then global fewest will become this. You'll keep track of your last index. So that's the your last index 
is kind of in this example, um, your last index starts off at zero. So like when you're using these three numbers, the, the, the zeroth element would be your last index. Then when you get rid of it, when you execute it, then whatever index this three is at becomes your last index. So you're just keeping track of that so you know which number you want to subtract. So keep track of that. You keep track of your subarray total and you keep track of if you found a minimum. If there's no, if all of the elements summed up together don't even equal S, then you want to return zero. So we want to keep track of if we found a minimum. So what we're going to do is we're going to loop through every single element. We're going to say our subarray total. We're going to say that that is equal to what it was before plus whatever element. So we're going to say we're going to add the ith element to it and we're going to add the inter add one to interfuest. So our interfuest is the least is how many elements we're at that we've currently summed up together. So after we add our first element, our interfuest becomes one. After we add up our second element, interfuest becomes two. But if we get rid of an element, our interfuest gets smaller. So then we, we check, we say, hey, is what the is our subarray total, all of the numbers we've added together so far, is it bigger or equal to what we're looking for? And if it is, we know we found a minimum, so we're gonna set that equal to true. And then we check, hey, is the amount that we found it in is that quantity less than our global fewest? And if it is, we set our global fewest equal to our interfuest. So we say, like, if we've only found it with five elements and now we've just found it with three, we want to keep track of, okay, three is our best bet. And then we, we, we don't know, like, if we can, so like, in this example, like with the, uh, with the 11, so, like, when I add the 11 here, we said, like, um, we said, okay, with these three elements, that is equal, it, it passes the test, it's bigger than the subarray. So then, um, while it's bigger, we want to get rid of, we want to get rid of the 7, and then see if it's bigger, and then get rid of the 3, and then see if it's bigger. So while it's bigger, we want to subtract the last, the last, like, number, the the first number in the sequence. So like we want to subtract out of these three numbers, the first number would be the seven. So we subtract that seven. And then we say our interview, since we kind of cut a number, it gets smaller than one. And then we still have to check. We want to still check. We want to check again, since we got rid of a number, we, we want to see if it's still bigger. So then we check if we're, um, if we're still bigger, if our subarray total is still bigger or equal to s, which is the number we're given, and we want to check if we found it with fewer numbers. If we have found it with fewer numbers, then our global fewest becomes our equal to our interfewest. So we do that. We loop through every single number doing what I showed you in, he, in here. And we have to remember if we found a minimum, we will return our global fewest, which was the fewest amount of numbers that we were able to solve the question with. If we weren't, we just returned zero uh, according to the problem. So I will submit my solution um, and we'll see. This is, I believe it's a pretty efficient way to do it. Um, I don't know any better ways. Um, let's see. Passed all 15 test cases and we beat 99.96% of solutions. So I guess someone beat us, but such is life. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I'll link the code on my GitHub um, in the description, and I'll also link this problem. So thank you guys for watching.